Hello and welcome to today's episode of the Work at Home Rockstar podcast. Excited to be speaking with another musician today. Uh, so he's a creativity and awareness educator, artist, author, speaker, and he helps people to become aware of their superpowers and give them another perspective of their situation. Very excited to be rocking out today with Michael McGrooch. Michael, you ready to rock? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm a rocker. I'm ro- rocking like no no way before. I'm <laughs> I'm super rocking. Perfect. So we always start off here on a good note. So tell me a story of success in your business that we can be inspired by. I hit the wall till I was 55. Let's start there. And uh, up from 55 on, I feel like 60%, 70% of my life is easier. And nothing has changed. Nothing has changed, huh. but my life feels easier because really? I became aware. Yep. Yep. Because you became aware. Yeah. Yeah. So you struggled for quite a while then. then. Yeah. Yep hit the wall from since a child I was a sick child went to school got found out I'm dyslexic and dysgraphic and basically art was the only thing that actually uh, made me survive L- literally made me feel like a human being and made me feel inclusive and you know we all have that that DNA drive to be inclusive to be a mm-hmm. part of it mm-hmm. and it does it for, obviously for a lot of other lessons but but for me, it was extremely uh, helpful uh, creating art, uh, and uh, and it helped me. It was my, it was my literally my savior. Uh, creating art was my savior. Yeah. So, what is it that made you become aware? Uh, I I was worried so much because <clears throat> art got me through my whole life, and I could not handle. The fact that 97% of artists are on the poverty level around the world. And I just couldn't, I couldn't comprehend that. I said, why is that when it gives us heaven on earth? You know, art gives us heaven on earth. Music, you know, it just, how can that be? And I dove in and I said, I'm going to write my fifth book about, and it's called Smart of Art. And I wrote that book and I dove into it. I dove really deep into it. I said, I've got to figure this out. I don't care what. And then I I realized uh, what we consider as the art business or the art world is actually an art business. It's a system like anything else. And it's all about the art product. The music, the painting, the poet, uh, the the theater piece, the movie. It's never about the, the creation process. Nobody gives a crap about the creation process. But for human potential, because and I was aware of that, all because I have no education. I, everything is self-taught because I couldn't fit into the system with my dyslexia and all that stuff. And when you milk the creation. This is when you, when you really f- find the abundance, when you find the worth, when you find your own worth. And I found out, I told you till 50, 55, I realized that by writing the book, uh, it was kind of therapeutic to write the book. I, I found out, ah, you need to compartmentalize every artist because I lo- know so many artists. I said, you need to compartmentalize the two things, the product, and the creation process in the human system the creation process is priceless it gives you and you know that you know you, you think you can't do it all of a sudden you can yeah i mean i mean we in what other job that happens other than you hit the wall hit the wall and finally get it halfway okay and everybody else is better you know it's just in, in the in the creation process you just flourish you just and and you can't believe it. And uh, when you create art and then listen to the music uh, four years later, you said, oh, my God, that wasn't that bad, right? And because you judge it while you're, you compare yourself with the Beatles and with everybody else. Yep. But, but when you then take it out of context five years later and you listen to that and say, oh, my God, that was really good. I couldn't believe I did it, right? Sometimes you have forgotten that you created it. And then you look at it like with really fresh eyes and you say, oh, my God, that's not good. It's not bad. I, I see that by my music and by, by everything I created. Literally, in the moment right now, I wouldn't think that's that good. 
But like in four years or so, three years, I would say, oh my God, that was great. I can't even, because you can't remember that you just did it, you know? And you yeah. look at it from outside the perspective, not from, oh, I'm, a, you know, I'm horrible. I'm not good enough. I'm, everybody is better than me. And I think when you, when you, separate the two of our creation this is my my tip for every artist separate the two the the process of creation and the, and and the art because the process of creation we have even with your podcast you have an inspiration that triggers you somehow on the soul level on the uh, passion level and out of this you start a conversation with your non-physical and you you you're going back and say okay what well, what what chord progression would would it do or, or you know and so you 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 start that conversation with your non physical and it goes back and forth and then you sleep over it you come back and it adds to it or whatever and what happens what the product is your piece of music or your sculpture or your painting is basically the physical manifestation of that conversation. And the more you clearer you are with uh, in communicate, the more you communicate with your non-physical, the clearer the conversation becomes, and the easier it is for other people to recognize the product. So that's why you, it's it's like it's a skill, you know. You you keep communicating back and forth, and all of a sudden you're you're clearer, and other people understand since we're all interconnected. And once the artist understands that, then he doesn't feel poor. Because now when you look just at the product, it's all about how much money do I need to survive? How much money do I need to, uh, does that bring me that money that I can pay my, my rent, you know? And you know from the art, you know from the art business, you sell something for, for example, a painting for 40 grand, half of it gives the gallery, then you have 20 grand. Now, how long can you live of 20 grand? See, you need to have to sell, keep selling every month 20 grand or every every five months 20 grand to survive. Yeah. <clears throat> and so you we lie to each other, all the artists, because we said, Oh, I sold 20 grand, I sold 40 grand, whatever. But because we are feeling so bad that we don't make money, we feel the magic of creation of that interaction which is so unbelievable, which that's why we, we're doing it for no money, right? Um, and that's, uh, and I was always thinking, oh, it's the systems that don't appreciate it, uh, uh, artists, but it's basically the reason why we've never defined our values. And and what I did in, in the Smart of Art, I, I started to define the functions of art creation. I'm not just, a, I'm not even focusing on the, on the product. I'm not saying, okay, that's a Pasquat, that's a, uh, you know, uh, smashing pumpkins, that is this, 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 this. No, I'm, not, I'm, I'm concentrating on the creation. And I, because I think the, the, when you go to a plumber and you say, why am I paying you $5,000? The plumber says, pipes, uh, work, and whatever cables and whatever I need to, uh, to install it. When you go to an artist and ask, how much, why am I paying you 10 grand for this or five grand? <clears throat> and what happens is it's, um, they say, oh, I got, I, I got nominated for Grammy. I got, uh, I, I was, you know, I sold my last song for this total non sequiturs, completely worthless. We cannot yeah. express why our creations are, have any value because our systems, our humanity has never, de has never defined art. I mean, look at Michelangelo, look at, look at Mozart. Mozart came and played for the Duke. Uh, you know, the Duke here heard him and said, Hey, live in my, one of my 500 rooms. I feed you, I give you money, I give you a stipend. And the guy was happy and then went to the next uh, next uh, king or duke or whatever. And the same is Michelangelo, right? He worked for the church. It's just, it's just neither systems like the church or a duke or, or a city or whatever, nor the artists have ever defined it. It was always 
by patronage and goodwill. And the problem with that is that we have never looked for any value. We just thought, okay, we, we saw those, those super artists, because a lot of people are artists, made that money and so it's possible for you. Yeah, it is possible. But you gotta, you know, there is also only one Elon Musk and one Jeff Bezos. You know, there is when when you look at the top, you know, and you cannot reference. You see, it's basically saying it's possible, but that doesn't mean everyone will achieve it or will yeah. can do it because there's other. It's not your talent. There's very talented artists and musicians. They're long dead and they're perhaps discovered. And they just fall by the wayside because it's not, and not everything aligns with it. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think that I think that uh, I think that part of the reason why is because with art, uh, as you said, art, mm -hmm. the creation of art itself, like the playing of the music, <laughs> yeah. is its own reward to us. Exactly. Yeah. Right. We we are actually getting value from doing it, and yeah. so mm -hmm. I think that 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 it's one of those things where. It's not that necessarily that other people don't appreciate us. It's yeah. that there are so many people that'll do it for nothing. Yeah. That why would I pay you? <laughs> right? Yeah. Because we have not defined it. Because if we, and that's what I wanted to change. I said, that's why I wanted to change the definition of the function of creating art, not about the product. The product is basically nothing other than an evaluation that is laid back in the art history, you know, they say, okay, Beatles did this, what you need you to do. So it's basically just a comparison. It's yeah. not saying about a product that's already here. That's why art is also very limited. Art could be, as you know, could be way more fulfilling and way wider, but everybody keeps on the success path of what product has sold before or what products people assume to, to be selling, not how awesome can I create my piece of art with you right now, like I'm doing right now. I, I'm focusing right now on making the best episode, not on how many people I'm going to get or whatever, because they're, they're the I'm milking the moment. I'm milking the creation moment with you. Yeah. And that's, and that's so fulfilling. And that's fulfillment is success in the human form. So artists could be much more fulfilled. Would they milk the moment and saying, okay, that's really my human or spiritual enlightenment, the creation. Yeah. Instead of focusing on the product, because that pulls them away from what they would create if yeah. they wouldn't have any guidelines, because art, as you know, doesn't ask anything other than, to be created mm -hmm. it doesn't ask for how many people uh, need to see it whatever you need to create it and unveil it to one person is okay just create it and unveil it that's all art art asks yeah and, and in I, that process you you grow tremendously yeah you know what i've noticed too is uh, like when you speak with uh with different people in in, in every any other yeah. type of business yeah. especially yeah. a creative type business yeah uh you do see that same type of like devaluing of their own service mm -hmm. and it's totally proportional to how much they love it. Right. Yeah. I mean, if, if you really love what you're doing, like if you're yeah. a, whatever you are, a, you're a writer or maybe yeah. you're a, a plumber, <laughs> but yeah. and you yeah. really love, you really love your job. You tend to devalue it because yeah. now all of a sudden you're like, Oh, but you know, I really like what I'm doing. So, you know, maybe I'll give you a discount. <laughs> right. And yeah. maybe I'll do it for free, or maybe I'll just help you out. And uh, what do you think about that, though? Like, do you feel like we should be just doing it for free if we love it, or or what? I, I think <clears throat> no, we should be compartmentalizing why we actually live on the poverty level. First of all, we need to be aware that the reason why, and we are unconscious about this because we're always whining that we don't have money. So we need to say, hey, the reason that we even can exist on the poverty level is because of art. Because if we would do some accounting, nobody would exist on the poverty level for accounting. Yeah. So, and you need that, and therefore you see instantly the value in it because you said, listen, as shitty as it is physically that I support or pay my gas or whatever, 
the fulfillment I get, the human success, right? Not the success in the system. The human success is fulfilling. It's the fulfillment. When I get the fulfillment, I can exist as a human. If you get the, if you if you chase the success in the system, you get away from humanity. You're not the animal anymore. The the, the part of nature. You become the automaton that has to get the first quarter and then make money for the second quarter. And then you 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 have these goals. They totally stress you out. Said, can I reach the the second quarter like I did the first? I mean, even if you're successful, you have, so it's in the system. If you're in the system, if you see that's your habitat, which is wrong, nature is your habitat, music, nature, yeah. you know, other humans. But if you see your habitat in systems, you are stressed, you are pulled away from what is essentially important. And that's why it's also, a, it's also why music, you know, music is inherent in us. Uh, poetry is all inherent in us. That's not like something we in, freaking invented, you know? It no. just, you know, you start a beat, you hear a beat, you hear the, the nature a beat, you start beating with it, you hear a, a bird sing, and all of a sudden, oh my God, look at this, how this sounds. Uh, uh, it, it, You hear water, that's music. It's all, it's the contrast to to to, to silence is, is music. You know, if you have... You have the silence and you have the the music and overlay and 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 it's just it's just I mean once you get into it it's just and milk that experience you're just wow listen yeah. just to the silence the, you know the syncopation of of beats uh, you know the space to to work with space and time oh my god I mean it's just the world is opening up and it becomes like heaven on earth and that's why I say art is the the tool to experience heaven on earth. Absolutely. Okay. There's no religion better than this, you know? Hi, my name is Anik Malaf. I'm from Mastering Ascension. And I've been working with Tim Melanson and the Creative Crew Agency for a number of years now. Tim is my go-to guy for all things technology and his team have helped me to really create the platform that I need that represents my brand, my message and connects me directly to my ideal clients. What I particularly love about Tim is before he starts to dive into the technology, he always makes sure that he understands what your global view is, what your ultimate goals are. So then that way you're not wasting a lot of time back and forth switching around technology or platforms. He creates something from the get-go that is scalable, which is highly, highly um, beneficial for any business. What I've experienced from Tim and his team is they're highly responsive. They are a wealth of information and they're going to offer you the tools that you need to really make the mark that you want to make in the world. So that's my recommendation for Tim. He's awesome. You're going to love every minute. You won't regret it. I agree. So now when we talk about, about, you know, cash flow and, and making sure that you're actually not yeah. living, living poor. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that you mentioned something really interesting earlier when uh, we were talking about, I think it was Mozart where somebody saw the value in, yeah. in, in what Mozart was doing and said, you know what, let me just cover your stuff. <laughs> exactly. You know? Because I, I think that that's the thing is that if you are worried about paying your rent, if you're worried about eating, yeah. mm -hmm. then how can you really create the art that you're supposed to be creating if you're worried about the next bill? Yeah. Right? I think it, it wouldn't, it, wouldn't it, wouldn't it, wouldn't it compete with, <laughs> with the, with the connection? Like, so if, uh, if you I are, it, it could compete if you give that man construct uh, any value. You know, if you, if you, I mean, this is what the world does right now. I mean, it gives to our construct because in the system, future is important because you have to make more. The only thing is to make more, better, cheaper, faster, right? That is the, that is the trajectory of, of systems yes. because every system works on, financial principles. So whenever you are in a system, religion, state, government, uh, uh, companies, uh, multinational banks, whatever, you have to go by that. And sadly, that has become our environment, not nature. And and we are, we are losing ourselves in that. 
Yeah. And 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 I think our biggest enemy, which which I realized, you know, with 55, 50, 55, I realized it, is to worry about the future, to worry about the past. And basically, you're never for the last half a couple of years, I don't feel like, oh, we have December right now, right? I, I didn't feel like, oh my God, it just started. I don't have that feeling anymore. I'm now a year older. I don't have that feeling anymore. It's completely gone because I'm not what this age means in like what does 55 mean in in society in the system. You're old, you're ready to retire. I don't think about that ever. No. I, I I anymore. Because you, you you only have the moment and everything else is a mind construct. And if you're in the moment, and what keeps you in the moment. What keeps you in that, in that, that's why I'm thinking art is the superpower, number one superpower, is creation. And I know you, you know, your mind wants to pull you away, but if you cannot, if you and I say, okay, let's do a, a piece of music right now, we can't think while we're doing that, we can't think about, oh, I have to pay bills. If you want to be here right now, you can't think about that you have to pay rent tomorrow. You have to, you know, uh, you can't think about it because that interview will be right out the window. Yep. So when you create, it forces you to be in your natural habitat of a human being. Of the present. Being, yeah. Being yep. means present, not doing, not worrying, not not trying to fix the future. You're not in the future. And life is uncertain. Life is by ex by, by, by default uncertain. But its system says it should be always sunny every day. If not, we sell you a Ferrari, a pill, or a face job. I always say those, you know? Yeah. And if you're not happy, let's say you and I buy that Ferrari and the pill and the face job, then you and I are shamed and saying there's something inherently wrong with you guys because, or it says, hey, uh, Tim, you are happy, but I'm not. So there's something wrong with me because system says, you're buying all those things. You're doing all the courses. You're doing all this. You're getting all, you do all this stuff and you're not happy. There must be inherently something wrong with you. Yeah. And that's, 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 that's the whole thing. And, and art keeps us balanced. It keeps us in that being because I couldn't fit in. There was something inherently, they, they're not diagnosed 50 years ago. They didn't diagnose that, but they said, okay, you are dyslexic, but basically you can't, keep school and you still keep school till I failed three classes. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't comprehend it. I couldn't regurgitate. I could comprehend it, but not regurgitate it. And, uh, and so I think, uh, I think uh, I tell every, every, every artist, I said, it is so valuable that you're an artist and that you have a leaning towards that and that you tinker with it. And there's no, quality in it you create what you create art doesn't ask you to be a good creator and to to know really fast beats and and, and be super skilled drama or whatever it says create just create and expose yeah and having that you need to protect it and you need to protect it with getting a job in the system that is that is no way other than you need to get a job that you know, if you want to be all about music, then go in the guitar center, do, you know, go, go, go where you can halfway be in the same in a music, music uh, promotion company or concert company or something that is related to the, what you do. But you got to get a job. You got to get it because it's so valuable that you keep doing what you're doing and not be forced to sell it. And I think that's that's the answer, you know, with the money making. You cannot be forced to create something. Art doesn't work like that. Art, the energy of art, as you know, does not work with you got to create something that sells. It, it is selling is not with art. It doesn't go with art. That's why you see, oh, my God, I'm only get famous when, once I'm dead. No, that's just it's just. The world wasn't ready for that yet. It's just, you know, it it just art doesn't go by system. It doesn't. And as much as you we try, 
And and Rick Rubin says the same thing. He says, you know, you got to create, you've got to be in the moment. And and it works and it doesn't work. It doesn't matter if it works or not because the, you're milking the, the, the creation process. That should be making you feel abundant. And guess what? When you feel abundant, life is way easier. That told you my, my, my life is because I'm fulfilled. It's 60 to 7% easier, my life. Literally from literally in within a year, it became 60 to 70 because I got once you get that, then get the next one comes and the next one and the next one. You say, wow. And it becomes experiential, the fulfillment. Wow. So do you, do you, uh, like, where did you learn all this? Did you hire coaches or no, like, where did you, where, where did you get all this information? How do you learn? From art creation, literally from writing down what happens when I do this. What did I just learn from, and then ask my question, ask my question. I said, so why up artists poor? And that, and first, obviously, your mind says, okay, because the system doesn't respect art. And this was a long theory of mine that the system doesn't respect art, art which it doesn't, because this because art doesn't work with money. It doesn't. It is is contrary to making money. And so, so it's not the art thing. It's our awareness. If humans are aware how pressure precious art is, we would all appreciate it much more we would actually put our kids into art school rather than learning anything else because you know when kids go to school they are 99 percent of kids are so super talented they can do a, th a task or a skill like nobody else 99 percent at the end of the school only three percent are, are, are talented are, are, are this the, the the exceptional ones yeah. So from 99 of exceptional, it gets down to 3% exceptional. And that yeah. and, and, and art nurtures that. The more art you do, the more you become. That's what I'm saying. I learned that from really diving into the creation process. Once I got, uh -huh, this, this is just a product. We, we assume, and the advertising of art, is it something special? Yeah, it is because it moves us. It, art moves us, like no advertising can. And we and and we, yes, but it is it is handled as a product. And once you are creative, you understand it. It's handled like a product. And people, what they do because it's handled like a product, they destroy the creation process. They ignore the, re creation, uh, uh, the, the creation process and destroy it. They deny themselves by copying patterns that work. And they destroy themselves by, by feeling they're never good enough. Yeah. And art doesn't say you're good enough or bad. It never, it's not an issue. Well, I think that that's the, I, I, think, I think that's the issue is that um, because there is art that has value. That's for sure. There is art that uh, there are songs that sell, right? Yeah. There Fair is enough. art that sells. Like so, Absolutely. there is art, and and I think that the I think what you're saying is that art itself it has nothing to do with that. I mean, you can you know paint a couple yeah. you know abstract paintings that will never sell to anybody, but yeah. that was that was something that came out of you and that created value for you. So exactly. there's that part of it. The creation of it is is value on its own, and then sometimes some of that art relates, and yeah. it, it moves other people mm -hmm. around you. That art there will sell <laughs> or yeah. can sell yeah. because it creates some sort of value in someone else. Mm -hmm. But but you don't know that if you're truly focusing on just the art, you don't know that when you're creating it. All Nobody you're knows is it. Creating it. <laughs> Right. Nobody knows it. If you tell Jay Z, uh, "Get me a, a product, a, a song, and make this work," if that was the case, every song of Jay Z that he brings out would be a, a bestseller. It's yep. not. You don't know, and it could no. be not even his favorite songs. Often, as your musician, you know that not your favorite songs hit the hit the spectrum, the wide spectrum in the system. That people deem as, oh my God, it's the greatest song. And you say, oh God, I just can't kick that out in 15 minutes. And I really, 
You know, I like it, but it's not crazy. I'm not crazy about it. My, my paintings, I have paintings that I thought, oh my God, I love this painting. Nobody looked at it. I thought if I post that painting, I'm going to have thousands of likes and whatever. Yeah. And guess what? I tested what I just tell you how, how, you know, if you, if you try to look through art, through the system, I did try the graphics program, an early graphics program. I just did dots and colored them. And I put that up and I got just to say, just to fuck with it. You know, I just said, and I got unbelievable likes for that. And I, nothing I did. I just did ellipses and, and painted them and, and filled them with, with color. I tried a, 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 literally a trial of a graphics program and it got all the likes. And the stuff that I created, we thought, oh my God, I love this. It's so fulfilling the creation process of this, how it, how it developed and how it got to nothing. Not, yeah. not and, 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 and that's how you, we look wrong at art. Art is like nature. It's like, it's like in nature, you exist. Your existence is, is the evidence that you're valuable because otherwise you wouldn't ex exist. In nature, there's no mistakes. And and art brings us always to nature, to our essence, every art. So that's why you go to an opening, art opening, and there's every gender, every race, every sexuality, uh, rich and poor. There's every part of life, and they mingle, and they don't even look at the art. They just, it is so magical. It's a ritualistic thing, art. That brings humanity always together. That's why I say it's it's the superpower of of all humans. It's the highest okay. form of creation. Because if you say I'm going to create a podcast, you already uh, limited your uh, creation because you, you you focus on you have a focus on what you use your creativity for. Mm -hmm. But art is creation out of nothing. You create a song. There is nothing. And you create a song and you create a painting and you create a poem and you create a theater piece out of nothing. And that's why that is the highest form of creation. Love it. So speaking of superpowers, uh, tell me a little bit, it's time for your guest solo. So tell me a little bit about your business and uh, what you're excited about. <clears throat> I am really excited about podcasting because I did 130 interviews all over the world because people want to talk about this. Mm -hmm. And I am about awareness. I, I'm, uh, you know, I always was a cre uh, creativity uh, educator about the creativity of the, the process of, of, of doing it. But I am now using the creativity to explain awareness. Because when people listen to this podcast, especially artists, they will be aware and just the awareness. There's no three steps there is no, you got to do this course with, you know, Tim or Michael, and then you get it. You just need to listen to this. And by this, you will create better work. You will be balanced. You will not be so worried about, I mean, the worry, if you want to worry, you can always worry. You can turn it on and turn it off, but you will really milk the moment of creation. And that awareness alone is worth unbelievable because it it fosters your fulfillment and always know that fulfillment is the human success it, everybody chases the fulfillment if you want to get a billionaire a ferrari whatever you want to do want to work out and have a, got a beautiful body it's all the fulfillment that it gives you it's nothing because ultimately and the fulfillment makes happy the okay. fulfillment needs to be first because you can't be happy without being fulfilled. The fulfillment of this, this is right. This is humanly right. And then, and, and, and that's art is the best thing to what's humanly right. It's, it's the best conductor. It's the best tool to use what's humanly right. You know? Right on. So how do we find out more about you then and follow your, your podcast and your you just go you just go uh michael m.com michael with two l's michael m-i-c-h-a-e-l-l-m.com and uh and all my social and linkedin and uh, everything is there and uh love it love it well yeah. this is a great conversation thank awesome, you so much for rocking Tim. out with me today michael thank you so much for letting me rock
Give him a cool. canvas to rock. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> to the listeners, make sure to subscribe, rate, and comment. We'll see you next time on the Working Home Rockstar Podcast. Thank you.